Welcome back to another episode. I am Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse Rowing, and this is our low back series keeping your back healthy, happy, making sure that all of this that we spend every day doing doesn't get overworked, and that whenever we're on the rower, we can get this and we can walk away happy. Stay tuned. We are going to talk about the three things that you can do when you're on this machine to make sure that your back is protected and that you are moving well so that you can save your back. When we are talking about your back as you are sitting on this machine, there's really one thing that we need to focus on that is going to basically solidify all of the back problems you may have and we all come back to this core concept. So the entire back health when you're on the machine comes down to one single idea and that is how do I maintain neutral posture now a lot of times we talk about being in extension right having a nice straight back rod straight is what you think of but often when we get that what we see is this broken posture where this rib cage flares open now this is not a strong position this is not a neutral spine what I'm doing is actually flexing at my TL junction or my thoracolumbar junction where my lumbar spine which would be everything from about here to here connects to everything from here to here this is my thorax this is my lumbar our goal is to maintain neutral posture which instead of being here would be nice and just kind of flat so your spine has a natural S curve to it. We want to just allow that S curve to lock into place. So this is that neutral spine I'm looking for. We don't want to be broken. We also don't want to be flexed, right? I don't want to be dumping what I call dumping into your pelvis, which is just sitting in this poor posture in the lumbar that we get used to day in and day out. So I'm looking for a nice neutral posture because that, at the end of the day, if I can maintain this posture while I move, so if I can rock my hips and maintain this posture, I'm going to be healthy. And at the end of the day, that's what matters, right? That's what I care about is that you guys are able to move your hips and brace and lock in a neutral spine because that is going to keep your vertebrae protected. That is going to keep your discs protected. So for those of you that are dealing with back issues, we got to come back to this. So to deal with that, I have three main points that I want you to think about. Number one, is how do I make sure that my hips actually can move, right? How do I free up, how do I mobilize that area so that my hips are able to move the way that I need them to move? Number two is practicing the movement. How do I actually take myself through that range of motion when I'm not under duress, meaning when I'm not stressed or not rowing? Right? How do I just fix that hip movement component, maintain a neutral spine? And then three, how do I actually practice that in the movement itself and then finally, it's just let's take it into actual rowing and go from there. So those are the three things that we need to think about. Let's go into how we actually practice that. Number one, when we are actually mobilizing the joint, what I want you to do is you're going to take a band. You're going to find some kind of a band that can create some pull on your joint, your joint being your hip. And what you're going to do is take a band and you're going to wrap it around your hip. You are then going to fold in half and you are going to basically let the band pull backwards on your leg as you kind of fold in half. So you're going to practice extending your leg while this band is pulling back on the joint. Now what that does is it's called distraction. You're distracting this ball joint that moves. So if this is my, my leg bone or your femur as it attaches into your hip, it's a ball and a socket joint. And when I move my leg, it does this. Right, so what I'm doing with a band is I'm giving a little bit of gap and then I'm working range of motion and it's gonna give me a little bit more range of motion than I might be able to get otherwise if I didn't have a band in there. So that's what we're accomplishing with that banded distraction. So I want you to go and you're going to do two sets of 15 distractions per leg. So I'm gonna go right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, 15 on each. What you'll find is that really opens up your hamstrings and it really lets your hips feel like they can move a little bit better, okay? So that's number one. Number two is going to be, how do we practice the movement without actually being on the machine? Well, for that, all you need is a wall, simple. You're going to basically set up almost a foot length off a wall and you are then going to work on positioning your body and how do you push your hips back? It's as if you're trying to touch your bum this guy, that, to the wall behind you without breaking your posture. So I'm going to push my hips back, 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 
until I can feel that I'm touching that wall and I'm doing that without breaking my posture. So that's number two. And the third is that I'm actually going to get onto the machine and I'm simply going to practice that same movement that I had against the wall, except now I'm articulating the hip while sitting in the seat so that I can feel what it's like when my feet aren't grounded to the floor and I don't have gravity helping me out. Now I'm actually sitting on the seat and I'm gonna feel that seat moving underneath my butt. Those are the three things we're gonna practice and we'll see how that works. Thanks for tuning in guys. This has been another episode with Dark Horse Roaring. As always, make sure that you go check out our website, darkhorseroaring.com or go find us on the socials at Dark Horse Rowing on most platforms, especially over on Instagram. Guys, thanks for tuning in. We will see you on the other side.